Now, let's talk about a very specific reaction, but a very interesting reaction, and this is the Kolbe-Schmidt reaction. So, with the Kolbe-Schmidt reaction, we're going to start with our benzene ring, specifically with our phenol. And we're going to start by adding a very strong base. And the reason why we want to add this very strong base is we want to deprotonate the alcohol group to give us the alkoxide ion equivalent of phenol. Now, what's going to happen with this complex is that we're going to get a resin stabilization that will end up putting, and I'm going to have to rearrange these here to make it a little bit easier, end up giving us this resin structure. And we're going to focus exclusively on this ortho because this is where this reaction occurs. So first step, we're going to use a strong base to form the alkoxide. Second step is we're going to introduce carbon dioxide. What carbon dioxide is going to do is it's going to act as what's, well, it's going to be what's attacked by what here is a very nucleophilic benzene ring. So our carbon dioxide here will be attacked and ultimately we will get this complex. Now, as with most of these reactions, we end up having the hydrogen give up its electrons back to the benzene ring so we can recover aromaticity. And what we will finish with, because we do have a hydrogen here, is a carboxylate ion and the phenol. So this is only done in the ortho position. It's much more stable in this position. And actually the alcohol and the carboxylic acid here can exchange the protons back and forth, which gives us greater uh, stability. Basically, we get tautomerization between the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. This is why we really don't drive it towards the para position because we wouldn't have that tautomerization stability. But this is a very simple, elegant reaction. You take your phenol, add sodium hydroxide, pump CO2 into the reactor, and you ultimately form this 2-hydroxy-benzoic acid complex.